If you've been following me for quite a few times, you know how much I adore Drizzle. Thank God that there is a Prism alternative for SQL ORMs. Even though I love Drizzle, it still has some flaws. First of all, and maybe the most important, Drizzle does not support cursor pagination natively. I mean, you can get a way around, but it's still not inbuilt. So when I was making Post-it, if you do not know what it is, I have talked about it in a previous video that you can check by clicking on the card. When I was making Post-it, I needed a way to stream the posts in as the user scrolls down. I was using MySQL with Drizzle and I needed pagination. So I obviously googled for a way and I found this issue created on GitHub. So I did the whole issue and two people actually mentioned about two different packages. One is Drizzle Cursor and another one is Drizzle Pagination. I tried both of the packages and found Drizzle Pagination to be a better fit for me. I'll just make a simple database pagination system from scratch. Let's actually understand why do we need it in the first place. So we have a client, we have a server and we have the database. So every time a client sends a request to the server, it gets forwarded to the database, the database returns the data and it gets forwarded to the client. Right. That's how it normally works. Now, in a traditional social media app, there are millions of posts. For example, we have 1 million rows with ID, content, timestamp. So ID is the post ID, whatever the content user wrote and the timestamp when it was created. Right. So there are 1 million rows. If we are on the home page and we click on this button, the refresh button, the whole page is refreshed and we get all the data. If a client makes a request with the refresh button, the server gets data from the database of 1 million rows. On the first request, you get 1 million row dates. There is no way that a user actually needs 1 million data. Now there is not one user, there are millions of users, billions in a way, billions into 1 million. I, you can just do the calculation, I don't want to do it. But yeah, you get the point. So what if we have a better way? We have the client request to the server. The server gets the data from the database. Instead of fetching all the data, what if we actually fetch 10 rows per request? Every time we refresh this page, where which I have over here, we refresh this page, we get 10 posts only. So just imagine that 10 posts actually end here. So first of all, we get 10 posts. And now next time when we request this one, we get another 10 posts. So for example, 11 to 20. Okay. And that's how it just goes on. So that's how we do not fetch all data at the time. How can we implement it? So I actually made an example for this one. All you need to know is just create an XGIS app. Uh, if you want to be quick about it, you can go to my GitHub and get this template from here and give it a start if you want. Now, all you need to know, first of all, is going to install pnpm add a uh, drizzle pagination, this package. I'll be using trpc for the backend strip. So if you do not know how to set up trpc in the app router, I'll be making a video soon about this one. But if you are in a hurry, you can just copy the template. Now I have a route called post.ts. Now inside it, first of all, we're going to import z from Zot and create trpc router and public procedure from a trpc file. What these are, I'll be explaining it in the next video about trpc. But for now, just know that these are the methods by which we'll be making the route. We can just write export constant post router equals create trpc router by which we'll actually create the router. Now inside it, it actually takes an object. So we have the route name as get infinite posts. Now you can have any name you want, but I just wrote it as this one, who cares, I mean. Now we're going to call the public procedure and we're going to use the method of input. So inside it, we're going to take a Z of object. Inside the object, we're going to take a cursor with C dot string and nullish. Now after that, we're just going to write the limit with C dot number. We have the min as one and max as 50. You can set it to 100,000, however you would like. And we have the default value as five. You can set it to 10, 20, whatever you like. Now after that, we're going to create another method dot query. If you're familiar with builder functions, I guess this is quite similar. Now inside the query, it actually takes async with a function and callback. Inside the parameters, we're going to destructure CTX and input that actually comes from public procedure. And inside the function, we're going to open it and we're going to destructure DB and posts from CTX. Now this actually comes from this context.ts file where we're actually passing the DB and posts. And that's where you're getting the DB and posts from the CTX. After that, we're going to destructure the input, the cursor and limit. We're going to find the data from the database. So if the constant data equals to await db.query.posts.findMany. We're going to import the with cursor pagination function from the result pagination package. And we're going to call it inside it. Now this function takes an object which will open and we'll set the limit of it. And now after setting the limit, we can set the cursors. This cursor is actually take an array of other cursors. So we're going to open the array and inside it, we're going to create another array for other cursors. So there is actually going to be one cursor for the created at, but you can have other cursors. Now inside this array, we can have the posts dot created at. So by which we're filtering with the descending or ascending. So we have desk or ASC. And lastly, we have the cursor. 
So by default this cursor is string or null or undefined but we want date or undefined so we're gonna check for whether cursor is present or not so if present we're gonna convert it to date and if not we're gonna just return undefined after that we're just gonna return the data and now we have the data returned and lastly we need the next cursor returned because the next cursor will decide from which the next data set will be returned so we have the next cursor defined with data.length so if there is data actually present then we're gonna send data of data.length minus one dot created at dot iso string. So we're actually converting it to string. And then if there is no data, we're gonna return null. That's all you have to do for pagination with result. Now I also made sure that I make the front end part of it. So how the data is actually being fetched on the client side. I'm not gonna code it right now, but I'm just gonna explain it to how it works. So we have the route trpc.post that we actually assign to uh, index.ts, I believe. Yeah. So we have the posts with post router that actually comes from this one. Now trbc.posts dot get infinite post the route name and then we have the use infinite query and now we are passing an empty object so by default you're actually going to get the limit so, and you can set the limit if you want from here but we actually set the value to 10 from the backend part i just don't see a reason to set it limit equals to 10 over here on the client side right now on the next param we have the get next page param by the callback of last page and last page dot next cursor so this last page is going to be the last that will trigger the next posts to be fetched from this hook we're actually extracting data as posts raw we have the is loading fetch next page function which will trigger fetching the next page and at the is fetching next page so whether we are fetching the next page or not now we have a use ref hook where by default we're actually assigning it to null and we have the name as viewport ref so this use intersection hook actually comes from at maintain slash hooks so you can just download this package now inside this hook we're actually assigning the root so viewport.current the ref current element now you can actually read the docs about what threshold does now from this hook we're exporting entry and ref this ref is gonna be the ref object that we're gonna assign to the div. Now inside this use effect, we're actually checking when we are supposed to fetch the next page. So if I show it with a diagram, it should be a bit more understandable. So for example, let's say this is our viewport. Okay, so this is what we are seeing in the page. And this is the total length of posts. Now, whenever we scroll down, so the viewport actually scrolls down with us, and whenever I scroll down to this part, so this is the last post, right? Whenever our viewport intersects with this last post, we're going to trigger the fetch next page function. If we're here, this should not trigger the fetch next page function. And But if we're here, this should trigger the fetch next page function. So whenever we're here, it's going to fetch more posts. There's some more uh, four posts and it's going to just map it over here. So if entry is intersecting and post row or pages dot length, so if there is length for the post row pages, if there is next cursor, if there is length of pages, and if the viewport is actually intersecting. Now just for simplification, we're actually flat mapping the post row. So if the infinite data of data, that returns another array. And that's why we're flat mapping it with the page dot data. So if there is no length, if this is undefined, we're going to just return an empty array. And we're wrapping it inside use memo. If only there is changes in post row, then we're gonna update this. Now inside it, this is nothing special. First of all, we're checking whether it is loading or not. If it is loading, we're gonna just return a loader that I have just created over here. Uh, this spinner thing from next UI. If you're not using it, please go use it. I don't know why if you are not considering using it. Now, if the, it is not loading, so if we have actually posts, then first of all, we're checking whether we have post lint or not. Now, most of the people I know, you guys like to do it like this, greater than zero, but no, I am lazy. So I just change it to a Boolean value. So if there is post lint, then we're gonna send all the posts. And now here's the trick. We're gonna map it with post and index. Now we're gonna check for the last index of the post, and then we're gonna assign the ref to the ref of the diff. And if it is not the last post, we're gonna just return the normal diff. Now here are some optional things. So we're actually showing some loading states. If the next page is being fetched, so we have the spinner. Okay, so the build is ready, and let's just start the server. We have the server live on localhost 3000. And first of all, we're fetching the page. And we have the first 10 posts with us. So I created 30, I guess, 30 dummy data about these posts. And we just want to fetch it from the database. Now that we are intersecting, we just made another request to the database. And we just got more five posts. Another request, five posts. Another one, five, five. And now that we do not have any more posts to load, we have no more posts to load. Now I'm just going to show you the network tab, how it's actually working. So let's just reload the page. So we have our first request with this one, where the result about the data. Now, if I scroll down, we're going to make another request. If I scroll down again, we're going to make another request and it will just go on forever. We're not fetching all the 30 posts at once. We're just checking whether the user needs it or not. And it's way better when you have a large data set, like 1 million rows or 10 million or 
I don't know, one trillion. Who cares? So I guess this video was an uh, informative one. I guess you liked it. Let me know if you want more videos like this. I've been making a separate video about setting up to your PC. And thank you, I guess. Subscribe to the channel. It, it really helps me out. Uh, have a good day or night. Bye. Peace.